Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another creature feature brought to you by the Reptile Zoo. I'm Michael, and this has got to be the best frog in the world. Oh, I can't tell you how thrilled I was when I got to uh, see and work with one of these for the very, very first time. And at that time, I didn't know much about them, but you better believe I learned as much as I could. I fell in love with this guy. So this is an African bullfrog. And uh, for some folks, they also know them as the pixie frog. No relation to fairies. But uh, these guys are an amazing frog. Frogs are already pretty incredible creatures, but let's tell you more about this particular one. So the African bullfrog can be found in the southern parts of the African continent from as far north as Malawi all the way down to South Africa. And a lot of where they live is surprisingly dry. Why is that important? Well, the thing is, frogs like water. They really need water. Uh, with frogs, they actually do a lot of their breathing through their skin. And that's really important for them to keep that skin wet to absorb as much oxygen as possible because if they dry out, they can die. That's why many frogs are found in a lot of tropical places with a lot of rain or fog or even places uh, like temperate zones where there's permanent bodies of water like streams and ponds. But this guy, uh, in a lot of places where they live, not all of it, but a lot of where they live, gets a lot of really hot, dry, long periods uh, where there's just no moisture and even streams and ponds could completely dry out. So what is a frog to do? Well, you might notice he looks a bit on the chubby side, like he's a bit overweight. Actually, he's perfectly healthy. Uh, we don't overfeed our animals here at the zoo, but this guy is built this way for storing water. He's basically a walking water balloon. So this frog will absorb all this water into his body cavity and just bury himself in the mud several feet down. When it dries out, it kind of entombs him. He'll coat his entire skin with mucus and just go to sleep. Now, many people will call this hibernation. It's pretty close, but it's a little different. It's called estivation. It's just like hibernation, except hibernation's in the winter. This is done during the summer. So that makes it estivation. And that can last for about nine months on average. I know that's a lot, lot longer than summer, but they will do it with summer as kind of like the center of it. Um, but can you imagine sleeping for nine months straight? I mean, no activity at all, just sleeping through the whole thing, no eating, no going to the bathroom, none of it. So this frog will just wait out the drought. And when the rainy season finally returns, all that dried mud will soften up again. That kind of triggers these frogs to wake up, break out of that old mucusy skin, dig their way up to the surface, and go back to doing what they do best, which is usually a whole lot of nothing. Not exactly the most energetic frog, but those times of the year where they're most active uh, during the wet season is where they'll get to spawn, make new cute little baby frogs, uh, but it's also a good time for them to get something to eat. And wow, you want to talk about a voracious eater. This guy will eat any animal. He can shove in that fat face and swallow whole. And let's take a look. I don't want to, you know, pry his mouth open, but if you look at my fingers from one to the other, that is the corners of his mouth. So pretty much anything that fits between my fingers there is food for this guy. Uh, they're not known for eating crustaceans, but I've seen people give them things like small crabs and crawdads, and you better believe they'll eat those. But they'll also go for large arachnids. They'll eat all kinds of other insects. They'll eat fish and birds, snakes, lizards, uh, tiny little you know, baby turtles and tortoises. They'll even eat other frogs. And let me tell you, they do not shy away from cannibalism. So we have multiple African bullfrogs here at the zoo, and a lot of them are only about maybe this big. We obviously can't put those with the big guys because then we might be short of frog the next day. But thankfully, cannibalism is not exactly uh, something they do very often in the wild. And um, that's only out of desperation, really. But, you know, they can make surprisingly good parents, too. The males in particular, they actually will guard the fertilized eggs and the tadpoles uh, from any predators or from, uh, from even the weather. I've, I've heard many stories of these guys where they will, uh, as the season goes on, sometimes the pond dries out a little bit. Some tadpoles get trapped on a little puddle uh, off to the side. It's running out of air. They're going to you know, be starved of oxygen. Good old dad will come plowing his way through the mud to dig out this little channel so the tadpoles can safely 
get back into the pond with the rest of them. How's that for some good parenting? But uh, they actually can make some pretty decent pets. You know, they're, they're quiet. I almost never hear these guys make sound. Uh, they're pretty easy to care for. Again, not really a very picky eater. Uh, this guy could easily eat like a couple rats a week. And uh, they, they really don't require much else. You know, give them a bit of water to sit in. Uh, also, maybe a little dry land to go and sit on every now and then. Though most of the time, like 90 to 95% of the time, they're probably just going to be soaking in their little bathtub. It's actually pretty, pretty, uh, pretty uh, impressive. I would like to have the life this guy has. He just gets to sit around and do a whole lot of nothing, and that's all good for him. All right. Well, hey, guys. Um, there's one more thing I want to give you before we cut this video, and that is that this is a frog that, even though they can make a good pet, there is one little detail you got to be aware of. Obviously, uh, uh, for a lot of frogs, they don't have teeth. Well, that is not the case with this guy. This is actually one of those very, very few frogs that does have teeth. And I'm not talking just a few. I mean a whole mouth full of them. It's kind of like a python's mouth where it's just full of teeth. They recurve. They, they're sharp. And you really don't want to, you know, wiggle your finger in front of this guy. Obviously, he's not a biter. He's a good boy. But just something to be a little bit aware of. It's not a frog you want to really, really mess around with. Uh, you should have a little bit more, um, you know, knowledge in what you're doing with these guys. But honestly, I've never had a problem with them. None of us here have ever really had a problem with them. And uh, they can be pretty uh, calm, relaxed, and very mellow frogs. All right, guys, I've taken enough of your time, but feel free to join us again. We've got so many more videos that we want to show you. So join us next time for another creature feature. Take care.